how did 1989 change your career? What were you thinking you were going to do for the next two decades in 1989? Before this came up? Uh, Before this came up. I, I was working in anything related to electrochemistry, like I worked on thermal batteries, I worked on electrochromic materials, corrosion, and things like that, and I thought I'd probably be doing things similar. But in our, I, had to, I was funded through Ops and Naval Research, and when this came out, I just went in on a Saturday and tried to reproduce it. I, I heard about it on the radio. That's how I first heard about it. Well, driving to work, I heard the announcement on the radio. And so I, I, I was already working with palladium on a, as, a, as a reference electrode loaded with hydrogen. So I knew all about palladium and hydrogen. And so that's why I was interested in it. And we already had heavy water in the, la in the lab because of NMR use in so I had everything already there in the lab, so I went ahead and tried experiments. And, and I talked to my sponsor, and he said, just work on it as a, on a back burner, you know, not to spend a lot of time on it. But and I had a postdoc that was very interested in it, David Steelwell, and he, on his postdoc he had more freedom, so he, he spent more time than I did. And, and we eventually came up with how to do the calorimetry reasonably well, and we tried it with the platinum we had on hand, but we got almost a zero. I mean, we got... We got the excess heat out, excess heat in is almost within 4%, you know, experimental error. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one unit in, 1.04 units out. And that was about the best we could do with calorimetry. And, and I worked on it for five months. I kept using the same palladium that we had originally in the lab. And I later found that it did not load very well at all with deuterium or hydrogen, and that's why it didn't work mm -hmm. you know, at that time. And so... And, and the DOE was working on their report to the, you know, coming up, the DOE report. And they had me, they'd call me on the phone and I'd tell them I see nothing. And so in their report, they listed me with Caltech and MIT, the China Lake Laboratory. I was working for the Navy at China Lake. And so I'm listed with that group because that's what I had at that time. And about towards the end, end of this, in September, I got a new palladium sample that I tried, Johnson Matthey. It was much bigger. It was... Uh, six millimeter diameter in and after a week or two of loading it I got excess heat and I tried to tell the people calling me that I now saw excess heat but they didn't want to change the report so I, I still stayed on the negative side in the mm -hmm. DOE report. I think a lot of them didn't have the right background that's for the problem you know elect electrochemistry is a special discipline in itself and calorimetry is is not easy with electrochemistry going on within the calorimetry. It's a different kind of calorimetry, electrochemical calorimetry, and, and it's long term. It goes on for weeks. I think a lot of people didn't know what was needed. You know, like the people at Caltech and MIT, they didn't know that you needed to run the experiment for a week or two before the effect showed up, uh, and that was one problem. They tried to do it in a matter of days and then turned it off, and that's too short a period. And they, and they reported their loading, and according to Mike McCrubery, you need loading of about at least uh, palladium to, I mean, deuterium to do to palladium should be at least 0.85 to 1. And, and they were getting like 0.6 or 0.7 to 1, in which Mike McCrubery reports you never see anything at that that kind of loading. So that was one problem. They didn't know, know how to run it long enough to get the loading high enough. And they made a lot of mistakes in the calorimetry. I've written papers on this. Uh, I got one published in Journal of Physical Chemistry where I analyzed the Caltech calorimetry and the MIT calorimetry and the Harville calorimetry. And one of the few papers even published by Journal of Physical Chemistry, which is one of the top journals, but they did accept the paper. And, uh, and, and, and I just recently published a paper about the MIT calorimetry in Journal of Condensed Matter Nuclear Science. This came out this summer. Uh, showing m big mistakes in the MIT calorimetry. So uh, I understand the calorimetry quite well. But, but the big mistake in the M MIT calorimetry that I pointed out in this recent paper is that they put so much uh, glass wool insulation around it, uh, it was about a one and a half centimeters thick, that, that my calculations show that most of the heat could not go from the, through the walls to the water bath, had to go out the top. Well, that defeats the very purpose of having a water bath at a constant temperature. You don't allow the heat to flow that direction. You force it out the top, and then they, they ride up to the room temperature has a big effect. And, of course, the room temperature has a big effect if you're forcing all the heat to go out to the top into the room and, rather than a water bath. So that was...
big error they made. They made all kinds of errors. Peter Hagelstein agrees with me. In fact, he's co-author on this paper, even though he's from MIT. They were planning for negative results even before they wrote the paper. They had a party celebrating the death of cold fusion and so on. So politically, they couldn't have come out positive. <laughs> They, had, they, they couldn't do that at MIT at that time, so mm. they, they, they came up with what they had to come up with. But, so th there was a lot of mistakes that were made. Uh, they were trying to do things too quick. Uh, Caltech did their experimental work and published a paper within six or eight weeks when the announcement was made. And you can't even run the experiment in that short a time period, hardly. <laughs> but uh, but I, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of mistakes made and a lot of people at MIT and Caltech wanted to shoot it down. And they, they did. Mm -hmm. uh, they pretty well erased it from the scientific, the mainstream science.